uh, my name is Jeff Martin. I'm the creator and uh, executive director of True Dungeon. Well, this year we are in two large exhibit halls inside Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis at the world's largest game convention, Gen Con. Yeah, this year we brought six full 53-foot extra-wide trailers with us with all the stuff we wanted to bring. Um, when we started 16 years ago, it was a little U-Haul. So things have grown in that number of years. Um, but yeah, we really wanted to punch it up this year, so we really needed to bring as much stuff as we could fit. Well, this year we changed our structure quite a bit. Um, in previous years, we've run four adventures, kind of two copies of two different modules. Um, but this year we decided we wanted to take the event to the next level. So we took the space of four adventures and we shrunk down from four adventures down to three so we could make those three adventures even bigger and more fun. Um, and we also really increased the quality of the sets and the props. So we, uh, I think we've done a really amazing job this year with what we were presenting out there. The dungeon adventure split up into seven encounter areas and we in the past have had these like kind of holding areas between them, just kind of curtained type of thing. And what we've done now is we've taken those um, like resting areas between rooms and we've themed them and made them just as immersive as the rest of the dungeon. And sometimes there's clues and stuff you can find in there and little things you can interact with. So it continues the adventure all the way through the entire two hours. I would think the complexity of the design and how we're able to present them, um, the ideas are about the same, but now we're able to use like Raspberry Pis and some advanced technology. We've got some uh, uh, um, augmented reality kind of stuff that's really neat. Um, and so where before you'd have an idea for a puzzle, but you couldn't afford what it took to make it, but now we're able with the generosity of the support of the players, we're able to build and make some really cool puzzles. Well, this year is the first time we've presented three different adventures. Um, we just call them the N series for Norris because it's based in a Norse uh, mythology type of, uh, situation. So there's N1, 2, and 3. And like in the adventures of old, if you played old AD&D, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, they were kind of linked. Um, where if you actually played N1, 2, and 3 in order, it would feel like one gigantic adventure. In the past probably five or six years, you've been able to choose, hey, I'm going to play this adventure, do I want to play a kind of a more combat-oriented or more puzzle-oriented? And this time, we're just, uh, um, in order to make it more fun, we've decided to just kind of meld those together, and they're basically a balance of both. And, um, and that allows us to make, instead of having two separate versions, we can meld that, all that space together and make a really large, nice, big one in dungeon that way. Well, what's cool is we do have some NPCs that you'll encounter the same one in different modules. So it's kind of neat that you'll be able to come across the same character across adventures. Uh, this year I am a weaponsmith and I will be meeting the players at the beginning of their adventure to help guide them through. It's been fantastic. I love volunteering with True Dungeon. The games themselves are great. You get to meet a lot of interesting players and just really help make their convention special. And I've really enjoyed bonding with the cast like in between and after the performances. I'm Zach. I've been playing the role of Flaxen, the weaponsmith. Um, I get to lead my group into the corrupted temple of uh, Odin, the Hall of Smiths. Uh, they have just rescued me in the previous adventure. so. Um, it's always very exciting to get to rejoin with a group that knows the previous part of the story and uh, see them you know, react to what befalls me. Or doesn't befall me. Everyone will take six points of acid damage. Six acid. You too, Blacksmith. I only have four health. This is my fourth year as a volunteer. Um, I was a drow for two years. I was a failing last year. And uh, this year I got to be a human. Particularly what I do is I love to GM. I, I love the new groups, the new groups that have never been here and seeing their experiences with this place for the first time and, you know, making this place really alive for them is, is really why I come here and I do this, so. I 
I'm a prisoner and um, I am here to be saved by the party, hopefully. Um, I am an NPC in the dungeon and you know NPCs have a long tradition of betrayal. Uh, but we'll see what happens with me, but I will be with the party for the rest of the dungeon and uh, help them get to Odin's Haven. Uh, my name is Andrew, uh, this is my second time volunteering with uh, True Dungeon, uh, and I've been playing for about four years, and uh, I decided to get involved and I'm loving it, so it's good. I love the theatrics, like I love the, uh, the props, the environments, you know, everything like that, that's amazing. Um, and you know, just the, the amount of work people put into the sets is phenomenal. They're both high hit points and a very high armor class. And they hit the entire party with an AoE melee sweep. So four people can, in, can stand in there and use ranged weapons and be immune basically to any of the damage. But the problem is by the time a lot of them figure that out, most of them are already dead. And the ones who are left are usually the melee specialized folks who have the hit points, so they don't actually have a good ranged weapon, which is what you were seeing this last time around, where the barbarian had only a plus one to ranged attack, so he could only hit on a 19 or a 20. Actually, I think easier on the higher level runs because the people who run Nightmare and Epic, they're coming through with enough equipment. They actually face stomp these poor things. The Epic run on the Golden Ticket, it's the only Epic run I've seen so far, but they, they beat it with six minutes to spare. So, <laughs> whereas the normal teams are struggling. At one point, or actually two points, you get to meet a uh, Valkyrie. Um, and she will help you if you're worthy to continue on your journey. So um, they have a lot of fun in both rooms that you involve, you're involved with the uh, Uh My name is Sarah Gokelman and I'm a Valkyrie in N2. It's my first time here at Gen Con. Uh, I just started True Dungeon this year at PAX and since then I've done PAX and Origins. I love interacting with the players. I love getting them to tell me their stories because all of these, so many of these players that come through have stories that they've thought of in their mind. I had this little girl come through that decided that she was a werewolf for the entire game and it was so cute and she just, I was excited to give her the chance to be that character, to share her character with me as she goes through the story. Greetings departed souls, whether weaponsmiths or armorers be, you stand before the entrance to the Blitz. And should you meet my test, you will soon find yourselves on a perilous path to the Hall of Smiths. You may gain your way through my gate by proving your worthiness in one of three ways. First, you may attempt to strike my shield in combat. Second, you may place the correct rune upon the archway thus Or third, you may perform a worthy battle cry that befits the realm of Valhalla. How the team's been doing? Uh, <laughs> you know, they've, they've been good. They've been getting it. Um, none of them have died, so that's good. Yeah, it's only the first room, so you know, I don't want them to die right away. <laughs> no need to load it with a weapon. All you're doing is like, striking like the shield. <laughs> I, you can see the shield, yes. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Clearly you can't. There you go. Take the uh, eight points of damage. Uh, but they've all been good. They've all been really nervous about going through this this exit right over here. But uh, other than that, they've been getting it pretty, pretty well. I sometimes I peek through the curtains when they go through, and it's it's amazing. The effects this year are amazing. We've got that. Um, We've got that snow effect over there that's just like covering everything. It's so beautiful. I love it.
Well, if you go through the adventures issue, you'll note that uh, in addition, like we talked about earlier, where everything is themed throughout, um, there's also just a huge increase in the quality of the sets and the costumes. This year, we really increased the quality of the uh, MPC costumes. We invested thousands and thousands of dollars in some really impressive uh, full body costumes um, that look amazing. Alexander Miller. Alex. This is really third year, third year. It's been good. Um, the first couple times I've come, I was like, why did I not do acting? I've actually been doing acting for a long time. So I'm really liking the costume. And I've been uh, acting out, experience with the players. Some players will heavily engage you, some of them will just, you know, ignore you. You roll with it. It's great. On paper, it is a troll shaman. Uh, the boss men say it's a goblin shaman. Originally, I was just told it's an ice shaman, so it's hard to say. <laughs> it really, it's really unfair to melee players. Because I'm up on a giant pedestal, so they gotta climb this island to get up to me, and then as soon as that dude, they do that, I push them all back down. Um, yeah, this year recently, with the increase in the uh, ticket price, we are able to hire somebody to come in and help with all the technology and the managing of all the various moving parts. Um, we hired Mike Nagley to come in. Um, he's a longtime volunteer, been working with us for 10 years, and uh, he's able to bring a lot of uh, good skills that we needed. Technology, like we have a lot of um, Raspberry Pi um, puzzles now, and a lot of really cool technology that we couldn't have before without him. Yeah, uh, well, True Dungeon claimed me as their own officially, and so they, they can't deny that they know this crazy guy. So uh, I've moved from doing a whole lot of technical stuff unofficially to doing a lot of technical and kind of management stuff officially. My role now is director of event operations, so uh, it's not uh, very strictly defined. It pretty much means kind of being Jeff when Jeff's not here, uh, so that Jeff can do the more creative things and spend his time and efforts there. Uh, of course, there's a whole lot of things that Jeff does, so I'm <laughs> trying to catch up and figure all of those out. You know, along with kind of managing stuff at the warehouse back in Carbondale and doing technical things like puzzles and stuff like that with Raspberry Pis or whatever on a more official basis. And then his wife Jen helps out part-time with uh, volunteering and some of the costuming stuff. And uh, without her help, helping Lori, it would have been a very tough year for Lori. Yeah, Jen is uh, is working for True Dungeon as well. Uh, now as uh, sort of a volunteer coordinator, uh, not like we define the role of the show, but in terms of being there in the trenches with Lori throughout the year, getting all the volunteer logistics work out, all the hotels, all the badges, all the scheduling, all of that stuff. And then she tries to keep us from losing all of our stuff at the shop. <laughs> The whole game has been kind of pumped up. Uh, John Cook, the NPC coordinator, is doing a fantastic job with, you know, kind of coordinating all of that and uh, talking with us back at HQ and uh, spending a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, who's going to wear what and how and how, how awesome is it going to be. Answer is yes. Very awesome. My name is John Cook. Uh, I'm the NPC coordinator 
uh, for True Dungeon. This is my second full year as the NPC coordinator. And uh, yeah, I'm just now getting into the role full time and having a really great time with it. So. And Jen has also taken it upon herself to make my job way easier. Uh, she is a phenomenal person for organization and labeling, and that helps me out a great deal. When I get here, everything is labeled, everything's where it's supposed to be. So having her on staff, like doing this all the time, has been a huge boon for uh, the organization, but also for me personally. I had been playing Dungeons and Dragons and imagining all my life, and I saw this. Uh, I saw this event that was making it full scale, making it real, that you could actually step into, and there was a story, and there was a, you know, all of this immersive sort of content. It was like bringing, uh, bringing my imagination to life, and so I fell in love with that. And so I, I get to, uh, I get to do that for other people. I get to bring them into this game. Uh, you know, Jeff's vision becomes real and you see the faces and everyone gets excited and that's what keeps me coming back. Uh, I do a lot of the effects makeup. We have uh, the NPCs do a lot of their own uh, face, but then we'll apply things like scales or dirt or, or blood or wounds or whatever it is we have to do. It, it just adds that extra layer of realism and immersion. When you are in the heat of it, it's a lot of work. There is, um, when, you, when you get here, there's a build that is uh, very intense and very time restricted, and you have a lot you've got to get done in a very short amount of time. It's a lot of work and it's very stressful, but again, back to the, uh, the immersion part of it, you get, uh, you get a lot of satisfaction out of seeing it. It's a lot of fun to see it come to life. Um, the same thing is with the makeup. You get into the heat of that shift when, it, when everybody's getting ready to go out. It gets very intense. Everyone's got something they need. And uh, so you, you have to kind of stay on point for that period of time. But once everyone gets out there, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's all worth it. Um, we've spent thousands of dollars, for instance, in N1, which is an astral adventure, in order to create these really cool rooms that feel like you're floating in astral space. Um, they're real expensive, and, but they look amazing. My role is a friendly traveler for the wizard. Some people say friendly traveler for the wizard. And my job as the NPC DM of this room is mostly to just watch people touch lights and then delegate damage every time they touch the lights incorrectly. I've had a couple of games that almost got killed by it. It stops after four errors of that nature. But um, for the most part, everyone's over here. Six is over here. Yeah, this year we were able to really punch up the immersiveness. We've added elements like fog and uh, better lighting, and we've got a floor now in one of the dungeons where you walk down a hallway and you have a stone floor that you walk on, and if you're not careful and you step on the wrong stone, something bad might happen. Congratulations, you just became corrupted. It was right there behind you. You're going to see uh, large, large scale puzzles that take up. We've got one puzzle that takes uh, 8 feet wide by 32 feet long. Um, and it's all tech. So, uh, <laughs> really cool stuff. It's been very good this year. We're getting a lot of compliments just about the increase in the production value, this immersiveness of, of the different each adventure, especially the into the astral, the astral journey into the bliss. I mean, people are just blown away by what Jeff has come up with and the team has created. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about the Ogre Mage. Just the costume, the costume in general is just over the top this year. I mean, more and more just exotic. So, love it, love it all. When True Dungeon started 16 years ago, it was just me and some friends, and we were, it was something we could put together in a matter of a few months. Um, and it was a single dungeon with very simple, like, uh, curtain walls, that kind of thing. Um, and eventually, uh, over the years, we've been able to expand and expand from, um, from 8,000 square foot to about 50,000 square feet this year. Yeah, we, uh, we packed the stadium to the gills. Um, we went to the, the new kind of enhanced modules and uh, we pulled in Viper's Pit, you know, an old fan favorite for uh, kind of a newbie intro dungeon. Medusa. 
So we've got four in there, uh, like always, but the, uh, the three that aren't Viper are now much larger, more complex, um, lots of really interesting tech to play with. Um, so the, the footprint of th those three dungeons has uh, gotten a lot larger than three dungeons would be in the past. But uh, we've also been lucky enough to also increase the number of volunteers over the years. So instead of just me and some friends putting this on, we have like 300 people that are coming in this year involved with setting it up, presenting it, and then dismantling it. And the reason that we can do all this now is because we've had volunteers that have been around for 10, 15 years. And they're able to be uh, really great leaders and lead the install and lead the uh, crew in running and presenting the show. The uh, longest one I can think of right now is probably Dave Radke. He's with us from year one. Um, he was a Gen Con volunteer at that time, and they said, hey, do you need a few volunteers? And I'm like, of course. <laughs> so they sent a couple over. One was Dave Radke. Uh, he's been involved every year. He's been to every Gen Con. He's been to several of the other cons. He's really uh, integral to the uh, success of the event over the years. He was the gentleman that came up with the crazy idea of um, doing a token transmuting where you can take your old unwanted tokens and turn them in and get some cool limited edition stuff. This year's crew is amazing, um, especially the install and uh, dismantle crew. They come in on Monday morning and work for three solid days to get this event up. And there were some unusual circumstances this year, so it made it a little tougher, and they, they did great, and I'm very proud of them. Um, and then it looks like the staff we have out there now um, that is running the event and showing it to the players is amazing as well. Um, we're putting on a great show, I think. I'm Maggie Howden and I just uh, dish out all the treasure that people get for completing the dungeon. And so this is my third, fourth year. Uh, Non-lethal means you can't die at all, no matter what, you're going to get a uh, survivor and that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a normal, uh, hardcore, nightmare epic. If you do non-lethal and normal, then you're going to get the green completion token. If you do hardcore, you're going to get the red. If you do nightmare epic, you get both. There's a lot of people are surviving. There are a couple of groups who have died, like total party kill, but not many. Everybody should get at least three pulls, and then some people have tokens that give them an extra, like the Cloak of Many Pockets gives you just one extra pull, and like some people, if they're a higher level, they get another one too. Uh, for my family, it's just like a bonding experience. We get to hang out all day and like help people, and it's just tons of fun. Uh, this year, uh, Will Walker, one of our other volunteers, uh, has put together a run for some of our some of the vets that have been, uh, you know, volunteering for a few years. And uh, so we got together uh, and planned to do this uh, super fancy uh, run. Clan McFancy Pants is the team name. Yes. So we have uh, taken character costuming and taken it to the fanciest level. So we're gonna we're doing a run this coming uh, Friday night, and it's gonna be uh, you know uh, super fancy. It's gonna be you know a, a lot of fun, I think. And I had this armor commissioned. A friend of mine uh, made it for me, um, and is uh, you know is super talented, and has uh, put this together this fantasy paladin armor. And I hope that you get to see it uh, in action. It's it's super fun. You don't find an experience like True Dungeon anywhere else that I know of. Um, you know, whether you're with a group of nine friends that you've known forever or, you know, a group of random people that you get thrown into an adventure with, uh, puzzles, combat, uh, you know, NPCs in costume uh, that are actors, you know, actually doing uh, real work with these characters. Um, you know, the lighting, the special effects, uh, I don't know of many places where it all comes together like that. It's just a unique experience. 
I think my favorite part of True Dungeon uh, has to be uh, kind of the camaraderie. Um, you know, we, we come in and we do uh, this great big event for uh, hundreds and thousands of people and you get this kind of uh, family sort of dynamic back behind the scenes um, and we just all come together to tell this big story and, and have all these great games uh, for, for these players and um, yeah, it's, it's the family, it's the camaraderie, it's uh, being able to hang around with the people that you work so hard with and get to know. We are expanding. Um, we've Originally, we've only been in Gen Con, and then slowly we've increased other cons that we've gone to. This year we'll be going to Origins, where we went to Origins in June, and now we're here at Gen Con in August. We'll be going to a Game Hole Con in November in Madison, and then San Antonio in January, where we'll go to South, uh, Pack South. And then there's maybe another one we might go to in the uh, April, May type time. We're, we're still working that out. I challenge you to see if you can survive one of my adventures, one of my true dungeon adventures. Get a zap!